when growing bacteriophages or viruses that infect bacteria, you need to give the phages something to grow on. And in this case, it's bacteria. So here is a lawn of a bacterium without any phage. And when we add phage to it that can infect this bacterium, this is what we see. And these little holes are what we call plaques, or basically holes in the growth of uh, the lawn. And each plaque represents uh, where a virus has infected and then ultimately burst the cell to create these clearings. So I'd like to show you what it looks like when there's just way too many bacteriophages. Sometimes you'll see that. So the plate on the left has, uh, you can sort of make out some plaques, but the plate on the right is just obliterated. So all the bacteria are gone. And the growth that you do see here are just bacteria that are presumably resistant to the phage. But we'd like to pick a plaque or basically create what's called a lysate, which is uh, all the phages released from the lysing of the cells. We start off with a label tube and then have some phage buffer in there. And then you can take a pipette tip, you can take a toothpick. Uh, and basically what we are going to do is we're going to pick that empty space. Whoops, it goes back on. Try to keep things sterile. Um, I put my finger, I, swear, there, I put my finger on the plaque that I want to pick so that I can see it. And then I just uh, stab it. And then on the tip of my toothpick are going to be all the phage that are in that clearing. Because remember, that's where the bacteria have died. And you just twizzle or swizzle or whatever you want to call it. Um, in the lab, we often use what's called a vortexer that vigorously mixes this thing up for us, right? And we just want to get all the viruses that we picked onto a toothpick. And here's where you come in. We want to know how much bacteria phage have picked. What is the titer or concentration of our phage lysate? In order to begin, we're going to need a number of things. Uh, we're going to need our phage lysate, of course, so nice and ready. We have our dilution tubes. Minus one to minus three. I think I'm probably going to add at least one more. We have our agar plates. Um, these contain magnesium, which help our phages bind. We're going to need some tubes so we can mix our phage with bacteria. We're going to require some phage buffer, which is a nice medium, or which is a buffer that helps again our phage stick to our cells. Ultimately, that's what we want. We're going to, of course, require our cells. In this case, we're using E. coli. So actually, what we're growing are called colophages. We're going to need pipettes. Um, set to 100 and 1,000, although we'll probably use a 200 in there as well, and of course, corresponding tips. As with everything, we're going to need to label, 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 right? So I have my dilutions in our small Eppendorf tubes labeled already, uh, and then I'm going to start labeling my plates. But first, I got to move some things out of the way so I can see. Um, now, in the past, when we did standard plate counts, we labeled our plates with the dilution that the samples were coming from. But in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to label with the final dilution. And we'll go over the math in class, right? And so in this case, we're going to plate minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. It's at this point I decided, you know, I need one more dilution tube. So I believe I ran off to grab another tube. So here's my tube for my minus 4 dilution. So then I can have my minus 5 plate, and we'll talk about that later. And then uh, I think I also wanted to do a control. One where has no bacteriophages, just so we can see. So my fifth plate I labeled as control. We will not be doing this as our class activity. I just wanted to show you all what uh, it looks like, as we saw actually way at the beginning of this video, uh, when there are no bacteriophages, right? So yeah, you're not doing it. Uh, this is for demo purposes only. In fact, during the class activity, we will probably change the dilutions that you will be doing. And I'm just going to move some things around a little bit. Uh, I like to stack my plates in kind of the order that I'm going to plate them, have everything set, and let's begin our dilutions. Now, to do our dilutions, we're going to add 900 microliters of phage buffer. Oh, don't forget, start your flame, work near the flame because we want to be nice and aseptic. But uh, 900 microliters of phage buffer goes into each tube, right? Pre labeled. Um, and I leave the caps open so it's just easy to add them. And it's okay to use the same tip for all four tubes. That's not a big deal here at this stage. And then once you're done, it's going to be just like we did with our serial dilutions. Uh, we're going to dilute our lysate in our first tube. We're going to then take that second tube, first tube and put it into our second dilution and so on and so forth. This time around, we are going to pipette 100 microliters. Right? So 100 microliters in uh, 100 plus 900 is 1,000 total. Right, So that 
is uh, 100 and 1,000, so that's 1 in 10. So our, each dilution is going to be 1 in 10. Make sure you mix well. Ideally, we'd use something called a uh, vortexer, which I think I was trying to show in the video. But um, 100 microliters mixed in with our 900. And this will be our 1 in 10 or 10 to the minus 1. And at this stage, once again, it mix very well, right? And this is uh, where a lot of things go wrong. If you don't mix well, then uh, you're not going to get a nice and even dilution. And then simply repeat this process, move on down the line until you get to your last dilution. When we plate phage, we actually need to give it time to adsorb to the cells, which means attach. So that's what we're going to use these tubes for. As always, we should pre-label, right? So we're going to write down our uh, we're going to write down our plates, my our final dilution. So actually, you'll notice I'm going to take out our ten to the minus one. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Uh, at this time, I realized, oh, I was supposed to write down the dilutions that we are plating, the final dilution. And again, we'll go through the math. So here's our minus five. And then uh, because of that, I'm going to remove the minus one. Right? Just get that out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of that. And then uh, we're going to add our control. So I think I need to add one more for, I believe I wrote none, which means none phage. And then now we mix everything together. So first things first, we need to add some uh, phage buffer. So we just take 100 microliters of phage buffer and just pipette that into every tube. Pretty straightforward. All right, so we have our phage buffer, 100 microliters. And this, once again, provides a nice uh, environment, good salt balance, and then most importantly, the magnesium that allows the phages to absorb. Adsorb, A-D-S-O-R-B. So 100 microliters into every tube. And now that you've finished adding the buffer, the next thing we add is uh, not our phage, we're going to add our cells. So 200 microliters of E. coli goes into every single uh, tube. Um, make sure that you give the culture a little bit of a swirl. It doesn't have to be hardcore, right? So just like a little swirly, 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 swirl, right? And then 200 microliters. And um, this is where a, a drop sheet would have really helped because I made a little bit of a mess. But again, if you do make a mess, uh, just a little disinfectant, clean up afterwards, and you're good. And like I've done with all my other tubes, uh, using the same pipette tip for each one is sufficient. Now we're going to add the phage. 100 mark liters of phage, right? And so this is where our second dilution comes in. That's why we are 10 to the minus, our 10 to the minus 1 is going to be 10 to the minus 2 tube. Our 10 to the minus 2 is going to be our 10 to the minus 3 tube. But again, we'll go over the math in class, right? Just make sure everything is labeled. Uh, I like to have everything organized so then I know and it's I do what's called a two block so minus one goes into minus two minus two goes into minus three hundred microliters and this time switching tips and I do like to give a little bit of a uh, mix before I pipette and again switch tips every single time and I, I, I always double check right I always read the label of my tubes uh, right before just in case because it's so easy to get lost and notice that when i put my tube down i just move it over one slot so then i can make sure that i know the tubes i've finished with and the tubes i have not yet finished with i'm just gonna adjust my rack a little bit uh, the tubes i don't need and then here's the one that i did not add uh, any phage to and then uh, watch out for hope you don't get a little motion sick now we gotta take a little bit of a walk um don't forget turn off your flame because i'm gonna leave and we need to give time for the phages to adsorb. So 15 minutes in the 37 degree incubator. Uh, so just let me show you where that is. That's Kayla, she's working hard. Uh, hey, someone left that door open. Probably me, but it should be closed. Um, 15 minutes at 37 degrees. Now the timing is something like 15 to 30. So 15 minimum, uh, but not too long. Otherwise, cells will start to lice. So we'll see you soon. Okay, this is where things start getting a little crazy. We uh, are going to use molten agar. That's uh, agar that's been warmed. Um, but there's like this uh, time limit that we have, right? So it stays molten for about a minute to two minutes. But as soon as it hits the plate, it starts to solidify very quickly. So just make sure that you're organized. I already took a molten agar out. I probably shouldn't have done that. Usually I like to take my agar out right before I use it. Pour the molten agar into your phage bacteria buffer mixture. Give it a really good mix. And then lay it over top your agar plate. So right in the middle and then very quickly, like kind of like you're coating a pan with oil, make sure that it's coated evenly and then that's done, out of the way. 
All right, let me show you one more time. So next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go and uh, grab the molten agar from the water bath. I'm back. Molten agar. Make sure minus three, minus three. Pour it in. Don't worry about the caps. And then mix well. If you forget the flame, not a big deal. Pour it in there. And then, ooh, this one wasn't the best, but there we go. Done. And again, you'll see, it's going to solidify very quickly. Yeah, I know. Uh, repeat the process for all five plates. Sorry, uh, we will use four as a group, so repeat the process for all four plates. And then that's the whole protocol. Again, just want to reiterate that because these things uh, solidify so fast, just make sure that you are prepared and you know what you're doing. And then nice little swirl, and then that's our last plate. And we're done. Stack your plates, wait for it to solidify into the incubator. We will see some plaques the next time, hopefully.